Bible way. It's a very, very, can be very, very, hmm, very difficult subject. Because people have heard so much about prosperity, you you need a lot of grace to be able to to bring down some walls and then reduce and cause people to see things according according to the word of God. So, Third John two says, "I." Well, can we start with that? Maybe we just start there. To John to say it's what? Beloved. Can we read this together? One to go. Can we read it again? sure not everyone read that. Can we read it all together one to go? First, the first subject we had we're able to look at um, prosperity from the fact that the prosperity we established the prosperity begins where in the soul So we're able to establish from the very first model, the first um, lesson we had here, that prosperity begins in the soul. And then you need to understand why there is a lot of competition for your soul. And when we established in 2 Corinthians 10, that the essence, the Bible says, though we walk in the flesh, we war not after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, what? They are not carnal, but they are what? They are mighty through God, to the to what? To the pulling down strongholds, yeah. Casting down, yes, verse five. Casting down every imagination and what? And every high thing, Pastor. Please help me. Casting down what? Every high thing that what? Against what? So you see that the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to what? The obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. So he says that the warfare that we are fighting is to the end that we are bringing down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So if, if prosperity begins in the soul, you then must understand the contention of the moment. The contention of the moment basically is 
that we have to exalt a kind of knowledge in your soul realm that is contrary to the word of God and then your philosophy regarding prosperity becomes affected listen and so depending on the kind of knowledge that your soul your soul is um, um, the content of your soul that is the kind of knowledge in your soul the kind of knowledge in the, the content of your soul depending on what is in there is to the extent we can say you're prosperous prosperity does not first you don't tie prosperity is not defined in the kingdom of god is not defined by how much things you have right I, I praise god it's not defined by how much things you possess jesus has clarified that for us that the life of a man what is not in the consists not in the what the abundance of things he possesses So you will never say of yourself that I'm prosperous and the first thing you will do is to look at, look at this, I have this. Look at this, I have this. So you may as well start celebrating yourself because God did not use things to make you something. You, that is, you are not because of what you have. And you will not be tomorrow something in the sight of God based on what you have always look at yourself from the perspective of god that he will always look at you today and look at you tomorrow not based on what you have hallelujah so just put your hand on your chest and say my life does not consist in the abundance of things that I possess. My life is not defined by what I have. Everything in my life makes meaning or derives its meaning from myself, from my definition, from what I make of it. Nothing makes me I make things. You are associated with the creator. You are related with the creator. So the things that you find around were things he made. I mean, you are with the landlord. Why are you dragging with the agents? You are the landlord's child. Why are you dragging with the agents? Does it make any sense? Hallelujah. So life will never be for me based on whatever I have. I will never be richer. Nothing outside makes me rich. Do you understand that? Nothing outside makes me rich. I'm rich already. I'm blessed already. Prosperous already. Are you getting this? You can just as well say that I'm rich already. Prosperous already. I'm blessed. Blessed with everything. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible says that your father is the owner of the whole world. The, whole, the owner of the whole world. And you know what he wants to do? What he wants to do in to get into your mind, is get into your skull, is that your father is the owner of everything. The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. The world and what they that dwell therein. The world and they that dwell therein. My father owns it all. Glory to God. And so what is the devil fighting for? The devil is fighting. You see, you must then know. The Bible says, what is man that thou art mindful of? There is, there is a contention for you. The contention is, let me take... You see, like we, you remember the analogy we used last Sunday, right? There is a rat race in Africa. 
because there is a dearth of resources. Amen. Praise God. Please help us with the nice place. Just Amen. Hallelujah. So because of the scarcity of resources down here, this, so people here in this side of the world make so much, um, boast so much based on what they have. And then we have seen the, is it, will I say the wisdom of God? How that people don't have so much here. People have so much here. And then you see the responses of both men. You see the responses of men in this side. You see the responses of men in this side. And then you know. Because this ones have too much. It has also affected the perspective about things. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. So sorry for that. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So we've seen that. You see, you see people in this side, the rat race, minimum wage. And then people are already deriving an identity from scarcity. What people will do for money from this in this in this realm, in this Africa, in this Nigeria, sorry, but it's true. And then what people will do for money in this Las Vegas? I'm telling you, in this Canada, yeah. And then yeah, you 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 look at it all and then you realize something. I know some people say, well, it's better of dying of enjoyment than dying of what? Um, for years. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, God. Do you know that poverty is not the absence of money? Uh, you, you, you better know that. You think God will only define prosperity and will not define poverty. Poverty is the inability to do the will of God. You're hearing that for the first time. <laughs> Poverty is the inability to do the will of God. Now, let me explain something. I'll just try, if I, I, I believe God, uh, just, we'll just say this and then we close. Listen. So, we, every time, why, why are we in church? Why are we in church? We, we're in church for us to get our minds recalibrated to bring into our soul the real way God sees these things and have that engineered our perspective and make us what are you getting this make us think the way God thinks and then we will function rightly now let me let me let me help us with this listen to this praise God hallelujah, hallelujah. so if we see the way God sees, then we can function the way he functions. So the God that made man, at least when you see Jesus, you see, and one of the reasons why we're looking in the previous, previous um, lessons, here, please just try and get the other ones because I'm actually trying to make progress, but I, I'm not sure some people were here who listened to the other ones, but please, please just try and listen to the other ones we have there so that this will make some sense because we're just going to build a bit on this. Praise God. Now, you, one of the reasons why if you look at very closely, you look at very closely from the scriptures, one of the things you will find Jesus always contending with the Pharisees, contending with the Sadducees, all of those guys was contending a lot with them because one thing they did, let me help, one thing they did repeatedly was that thank you this if you we do look chapter twelve you'll find something interesting happening there. He was fighting and blasting these guys because these guys did one thing. Look at this. They 
channeled, they changed, they, com- they, they made Israel covet after resources. They basically tweaked the understanding of prosperity, especially from God's perspective, from the pursuit of God to what you possess. Are you following this? Let me let me let me show you a scripture. Praise God! I, I, I didn't plan to go there, but we'll, we'll go there. Look at Samuel. Samuel, the second Samuel. Because uh, I didn't, it's not in my notes here. Look at second Samuel chapter 2. Sorry, first Samuel chapter 2. Holy Spirit. First Samuel chapter two and verse and verse twelve. And verse twelve. First Samuel two and verse twelve. Look at this. Now the sons of Eli were what? Oh, come on, are you in church? Mm-hmm. Now the sons of Eli were what? Sons of Belial. You know the sons of Eli? Who knows their name? Bible student, let us start from there. Their names are? Oh, beautiful. What were they? You know they were priests. You know they were priests. The sons of Belial. Look at. Look at chapter 3. What, look at, there were, there were sons of Belial. Why? For they knew no what? These were people who were ministering in the house of God. The Bible calls them the sons of Belial. In your Bible, as you call them, Omoishu. They were priests the ones who were doing the offerings, who were doing the sacrifices, but the Bible calls them sons of Belial. It's not everyone that holds the mic that is a child of God. This priesthood thing, it's not every mind, every mouth that is consecrated to, to the service of the Lord. No, not. He calls them that they were they, why they knew not. Look at chapter three and verse one. They knew not the Lord. Look at chapter three and verse one. It says, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord, if you use another translation, the word meaning there is, and the word of the Lord was very scarce. I hear you following this. The word of the Lord was very scarce in those days. There was no word. They can come to church half service, but there was no word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Are you now, are you seeing what is going on here? Are you, it's, it's, it's so, it's so interesting. And you see, if it was written in the scriptures before, if it happened before, it can happen again. No? If it happened before, it can happen again. The word of the Lord can be scarce. You know why it was you know why the word of the Lord was scarce? Because there were no true prophets that would bring the word of God. 
the real men of God that God could give real understanding that could bring forth the word of God. They were not available. What do we have? We had charlatans in the temple. Charlatans were now give, dishing out the way that God should be served. So when there is no vessel through which through God can bring forth his word, and it's not just the bringing forth of his word, it's the bringing forth of his mindset. That's why we were hard on the word doctrine. Doctrine is so powerful. They ask you, what is your doctrine with respect to money? A number of us are, have, have swallowed things. My God. Swallowed a lot. So, because we as a church we have failed to realize that the the strength, the progress of the people of God is depending strongly on the priesthood. The priesthood determines how far the people or determines the the degree of affinity, the closeness the people will be to the way and manner God operates. That is, if the priesthood is faulty, there is no way the people will get to know it. Once, are, you, are you following this? Once priesthood is wrong, people will miss it. It had become so bad in the land of Israel that when some people came into the temple and they were throwing money, you know what they were doing? In the treasury, there were, there, were, there were huge donations in church. Huge donations in church. One woman came with two mites. And she came to drop that two mites. And Jesus was watching. And when she dropped it, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, of all of them that dropped this one, that woman, that woman, Give more than all of them. Because she gave out of, she gave out of, she gave everything. I, I mean, from that day you will know that the way he, he sees money, if it's not the way you see money, it's dangerous. dangerous and there has been such contention from time in 2nd Thessalonians 2 when we looked at 2nd Thessalonians 2 I think in verse 4 right 2nd Thessalonians 2 and verse 4 was talking about the devil he says he who what who opposed and what? Exhorted and what? Himself, what? Above all that is what? Called God. All what? All that is worshipped. <laughs> so that he as God, seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So if we can dethrone the wrong perspective you have concerning prosperity and enthrone the right perspective about prosperity then we're, we're doing well and let me show you scripture Deuteronomy chapter 8 Deuteronomy chapter 8 now we can go Deuteronomy chapter 8 Deuteronomy chapter 8 Hallelujah Look at verse 1. 
all the commandments which I command thee this day shall you observe to do that you may what? Live. Number one. Oh. Help me. Help me, Holy Spirit. That you may what? Live. That's the very first thing. The commandment of God that you observe is to the end that you live. Hmm. For example, if, if you choose to worship God in an ordinance that he, he has not prescribed, you are going, you see, you are, it's like math. It's like, it's so, it's so, it's like math. It's two plus two is what? Come on. Is there any possibility that two plus two will be any other figure other than four? I'm not talking about those further math things, please. It's just, let's be simple. Let's be simple here. Two plus two is what? It's only four. Normal people know it as four. The moment it becomes any other thing other than four, then there's a problem. All the commandments which I command you this day shall you observe to do, that you may live. The house of Israel, listen to this, that you may live. And what? And what? And multiply and go in and what possess the land which what the Lord swear were unto your fathers. Listen, I want you to it's just like let's let's hold let's hold the beams together and listen. The God that made man is the only one that can tell you what prosperity is. And you know why we are we are hitting like this? Because our world our world is so what materialistic that Christians have a problem with the definitions. God says the definition for prosperity is inside. The devil says the definition for prosperity is outside. And we are seeing the drama going on today. What is aching my heart the most? You see why I'm shouting on the priesthood? There are many things the people of God believe about prosperity and financial increase from the church that had no basis, no foundation, no root, no nexus with God. One reason why many people have been crying to God over finances and God increase and money and all of that, and the reason why they've not been getting answers is because the foundation for that prayer is first of all faulty. It's faulty. So one thing God wants to do is to enthrone into your mind. He says, you see, I want you to understand that every imagination that the enemy is bringing out Every stronghold. Ah, I pray for you today in the name of Jesus that your life will represent Christ in all of its his fullness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ah. Because every imagination, every stronghold erected because we say the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. A man is only the product of his mindset. Whatever is operating, a man, see, forget about a man. It, no matter the size of a man, you know a man based on what is running inside of him. Do you know that you can as well raise Goliath in your house and train Goliath and tell Goliath, as soon as you see anybody from Israel, run away. Do you know that if he had even seen David because you've told him from childhood <clears throat> whenever you see an Israelite run away do you know that he would have run away even if he is a 12 year old David? There is this thing they say about culturing <clears throat> there is, there is um, I even heard of a particular story where there was um, is he a lion? There's, there's, uh, maybe zoologists can help you. There's a way you can culture an animal to behave less than his capacity. You, you, yes, that you culture, you, you, you create a mindset inside of that animal, something less than 
his potential, some an animal that should be naturally brave will become naturally timid. You can you you, you understand what I'm saying? Yes, that conditioning. Thank you very much. A lot of us are going through. You see, when we say that. When we say that, you see, forget the size of a man. A man is only what he is inside. A believer, forget how he looks like. It's only the current mindset that is running inside of him that is, is the definition of the man. I tell you something. So when the Bible says that the real warfare is in the soulish realm, that is casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, you should understand how serious money is. <clears throat> because without money, we cannot push the gospel forward. But also, you will see the way the devil uses money and flashes money in the eyes of even Christians and then makes it look like, ha, huh, you guys are in trouble. I'm going to show you that if you don't play it by my own rule, you can't have this money. Do you know that you only need to tweak your lifestyle and then you'll become very rich? Do you know? Have you understood? You, someone, 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 and the, it, it is currently running, running around that the person can be in the world, have lots of money, friends, fame, and all of that. A number of things that's bringing money for him or her. And then you tell the person to get born again. And when the person gets born again, so you mean I'll get born again and I'll start coming to church? Because, and the person asks a question like, I will not be poor. Do you know? Do you know they associate some level of poverty with being a believer? That is, are you following this, guys? So they say that you mean I would now live my lifestyle that brings me money. I will now come and be serving Jesus and I will now be poor. Hmm. And I'm like, God, there is so much battle for what you represent. Is it, uh, what exactly, is it about praying in tongues? Is it praying in tongues that repels money? Is it, what exactly is the thing inside of Christianity that makes money just run away from people? Why? Why? Why is that? And I realized there's a major warfare going on out there. There's a real major warfare going on out there. And so, Deuteronomy now starts explaining something to us. And before we open Deuteronomy, and I want you to see this. God himself, the real one, let me explain it like this. The one reason why Christians are poor is one of the reasons. One reason why Christians are poor, apart from the mindset and the way and perspective they have about money, one reason Christians are poor is because they have failed to understand why God and what God does with money. The day if God were sitting where you are sitting, have your ATM card, your specific first bank account, and he becomes the owner of it and is staying in your position right now. The moment he occupies that account, your personality, everything, like you, we substitute you and we put God. From that day, he will show you with that all that you possess what money is. then you understand what prosperity is. The problem is not the money. It's not the 5,000 in your first bank account. It's the mindset of the person that has that 5,000 in that first bank account. Now let's... So, I have, one thing I did for when, when preparing for this... Uh, I, said, I just said, Lord, Holy Spirit, you got to open my eyes to see this. <laughs> my king, 
Look at that. But you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. Look at, let's go on. <clears throat> and thou shalt remember all the way which what? The Lord thy God, what? Let thee this forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee and to know what was in thy heart. Are you seeing this? Whether thou wouldest what? Keep his commandments or not. And he did many, th- verse 3, and he humbled thee, uh, what? And suffered thee to what? Hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that what? Man does not live by bread only, but by every word that what? Proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord, that man live. Listen, the same God, <clears throat> excuse me, The same God, let me say Jesus. Jesus came in the context of a civilization. Please, I beg you by the mercies of God, follow me. Jesus himself came in the context of a civilization created by the Pharisees and Sadducees that exalted money. The Bible says, and the Pharisees who also were covetous. If you look at Luke chapter 12, just briefly Luke chapter 12 and verse 13. Look at Luke chapter 12 and verse 13. Look at this. Luke 12 and verse 13. Amen. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to him. No, this is not it. Verse 15, right? Okay, good, let's go on. Speak to the brother that he divide the inheritance with me. Verse 14. What? And he said unto him, man who had made me a judge or divider over you, verse 15, what? And he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possessed. And then he said a parable, 16, right? And he spoke a parable. Uh, There's a particular chapter. let Let me just go on, just because of time. Because at the time Jesus was teaching and teaching, and then the Pharisees and he says, and the Pharisees and Sadducees, who were also were covetous, derided him. I was like, come on. Because if you look at this now, understand this. If you look at this, what Jesus came to say is, Blessed are you amongst um, blessed are you, as in as says, um, uh, you have heard that you, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Jesus, but I say unto you. What if your brother t- he slaps you, turn the other one, give him? So, I mean, if they ask you, go one mile, you go an extra mile. If they ask you for a jacket, give him your suit and your singlet. So, if you understand this, follow this closely. Jesus, even Jesus came into a context of it. I mean, he came into the temple and they were selling doves. He came into the temple, they were selling pigeons. He came into the temple and they were changing monies. They had made the temple the place which is a place of prayer. The one Solomon raised up his hand and was praying and consecrated and dedicated. They had turned the temple to a den of thieves. Are you seeing where the power of the priesthood is? So you will see someone will come on TV. I mean, Jesus came there and blasted and drove, drove them away, used pancara, used whip, used everything to drive them out. You see, what I want you to understand is if you follow, if you, if you are watching Jesus, doing the zeal of the house as consumed me, you're, you're following Jesus side by side, you will understand. Because what were they doing? You'll be like, Jesus, what exactly is the prosperity here? <clears throat> the guys who were the, the, the priests of the temple, what had they turned the, the temple? They had turned the temple into a bank. Have you seen what people are doing with churches today? I have a special anointing of today is 10, 10, 20, 10. If you drop a ten dollars today, you get a ten, ten hundred before you turn. Have you have you have you heard that before? You say that I've come for them. The tables, the tables are set the tables. I'm sure they will not stand by the end of the service. So I have an anointing. So if you bring a 10, 10, 10, you are going to enter into a 10, 10 glorious. Where did we get all of that? 
You will be saying that, look at Jesus came in the context of a temple where he was driving people out. See, as at that time, people had converted this thing to a money-making business. I'm saying this for your sake. You will be watching a foreign preacher that you too, in your Naira notes, you will be converting your money to dollar and you'll be paying because the priest, preacher said, if you send it now, if you do not send it in 24 hours, something, and they'll be pressing, I'm like, oh, it's going, going, going. And you think, it, what, is it bazaar? What's going on here? What's going on here? I mean, people are, are like, you want to tap into an anointing. And so, so say, so, so, so. And people, I, I'm, we're just watching. Do you know how much merchandise? I mean, did you read that? It says those who will make merchandise through your own covetousness. Is your own covetousness the loss that is inside of you? You know that hundredfold return, the one that you will put the money on my job, the ATM will bring back. You put hundred now, one thousand will come out. You put one thousand, one million will come out. Really? Even you to own one lare is inside your body. The thing that's inside your body that wants to make sharp sharp money. You will fall for preachers that will tell you that nonsense. You know what we have turned church to? It's a business center. So we will think that the breakthrough I don't have, maybe if I tap into this anointing, money will come. If I tap into this anointing, you, they will even sow for their wife to come. Sow for, I mean, really, really. Listen, listen. The, the, the problem. I see. I have so much to teach, but you know what? I just believe that the Holy Spirit will not allow me. Pray. Because see, if you don't get tired, if you even want to come learn prosperity with the aim that when Pastor would finish telling me, without breaking that mindset, we are telling you that your life they put your life on the scale. Two persons are competing. The Lord is saying, take the knowledge of God. No, the enemy has erected foundations and interestingly erected foundations and, and monuments in your mind. Even with preachers in the church. Pharisees did it in that time. And Jesus was trying to drive them out. What makes you think today we don't have them? There are plenty of robbers in the church. And we, those who are sitting here, are the ones enabling them. The day you stop and say, I will not give. Maybe they will realize that they don't have any anointing. The pew sitters are the ones enabling the arm robbers here. We have abused the church. We have converted the church from what it should ordinarily be. The Bible says, of whom the way of truth will be evil spoken of. You go to some, I mean, it's so bad. It's so bad. Some will have a way of almost blackmailing you if you do not drop the money. And I'm saying there's a reason why I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm also standing holding the mic. Listen, the principle will not change. The principle will not change. That God loves a cheerful giver. You must not bring carrot to promise the person to give. Once you have prom- held one, one blessing in your hand for the person to give, it's no more, it's no more cheerful giving. No. They blackmailed you to give. They, co- they coerced you to give. They are using your head to give. And you, you don't have enough, 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 enough common sense according to the word of God to know. Listen, prosperity for you. And no matter how many you how many times and much money, money you give, I promise you, if, even if for nothing else, because you are in this service today, it will not work in Jesus' name. It will not work in, in Jesus' name. It's time to sanitize the temple. It's time. The Bible says, now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Is in the house of God. The judgment, let it begin in the house of God. Enough is enough. All of us had the perspective that when we give, we, the money will come. Till today, till today, more than half of the church people think that the returns on investment, that is, more than half of church people, even when they are giving offerings, 
they give offerings with the mindset that there will be returns on investment. People have these mental blessings in mind that, well, God, you see, it's 1,000 I have, but you see that it's 500 that I give. You see, you, you, you better do well. You better do well. You better do well. I, I have stretched myself too much, so you, you better come back. You better, yeah, God. They are even threatening God. God, if you don't, if you, if you. very few persons in church ever give without ever ever saying, "Just give." We just thank you, Lord. Thank you. We are too business minded. If we give, ah, I need that breakthrough this week. Oh, for God will remember my story. If only that's just offering. Now think about those who are in desperate need for a 24-hour miracle. You know why you will sow that seed for that 24-hour miracle? And you know what? Which, which, which of the preachers will not use scriptures? Which of them will not use scriptures to justify it? I'll show you one scripture. Just help me, Deuteronomy. Ah, are we gone? Deuteronomy. Let's, uh, you have your Bible, right? Yes, Deuteronomy 8. L- let me show you a scripture. Oh, Lord, help us. Help us. Help us. As a church of God, help us. I, I, I'm just looking at I said, Jesus, if you will do that at that time. I'm sure you're still doing it today. He's sanitizing then. Was sanitizing then. He's sanitizing now. Look at 8. And it says, look at verse, verse, um, look at verse 6. Therefore thou shalt what? Keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, what? To walk in his ways and what? And to fear him. I'm grateful to God that God helped us start this year. Finding and seeking God without do you understand? Without all those ancillary blessings. The true knowledge of God is when you look for God without, as in as the deer panted for water, so my soul panted after thee. That is, I want to breathe and inhale and exhale God. I don't, no, no, not for your hand. I want to know you. Let him that glory, glory that he knows God. Did you see the scripture we, put, we started there? It says the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. And you know why they're the sons of Belial? Because they know not God. If you know God, we've been drumming this thing, guys. You can't joke, you can't, you can't firm out, you can't firm out the knowledge of God you will have to somebody else, not even to a preacher. Sitting and learn the word of God for yourself. You know why they are sons of Belial? Because they know not God. Because if they knew God, they won't be doing what they were doing. And they were, can you blame them? Look at Eli, their father. Eli, their father. You see how powerful parenting is. Parenting is so powerful. You, your mindset, what as a parent, you can put, you can be the one the devil will use to erect mindsets, imaginations, strongholds in the mind of your children. If you don't get it right, you are the one running from pillar to post, running from one pastor to one prophet to another, to, to be sowing and sowing and sowing. What will your children do? They knew not God. The sons of Belial. They were sons of Belial. Now he says this. Look at so 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 that you understand. He says, look at verse six. Thou shalt keep the commandments of thy Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. Why? For verse seven. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land. I have so much to say about the covenant, but go on. Into a good land, a land of brooks, of water, of fountains, and of de- and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and what and vines and fig trees and pomegranates and a land of olive and honey. 
Look at this. It says, a land, come, come on guys, is this not prosperity? A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without what? Without scarceness, thou shalt what? Not lack anything in it. <clears throat> you shall not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. Is this not prosperity? Is this not prosperity, guys? Do you know what it means for your stones, your stones to be iron? Do you know it's talking of natural resources here? But that, that, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass? Go on, yeah. When thou hast eaten and art full, <laughs> that thou shalt bless the Lord thy God <clears throat> for the good land which he had what? Given thee. Verse 11, yes. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. Listen. Ah, guys. It is well. It is well. It is well. It is well. See, God his own Israelites, his own people. When he was even making the covenant with Abraham, do you know he didn't... He, oh God, it is well. It is well. It is well. All that God did with that man and with the children of Israel was not directly about come, guys, come. I have plenty. When you come and serve me, you have iron. Your, your stones will be iron. When you come, you will drink honey. You will take, you will take um, milk. You will drink. You, you know that God did not use that. To, do you know? Even I, do. You, do you know that this covenant with the Abraham into the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey, it was not because of milk and honey he cut the covenant. I hope you know that. It was not because of milk and honey he cut the covenant. It wasn't for food. He enticed them. It is a basic understanding that if you serve the Lord your God, it is consequential. It is it behooves on the God you are serving to take care of you. That taking care of you is not like come and serve me or else you will not eat. You see, this kingdom is alignment. Is alignment. The essence of this is alignment. You see, it is not God you are serving. When you say, God says, if you serve me, uh, you know, you now have the promotion. And what is that? Is it not normal for a father to take care of his children? Do you promise your children? <laughs> yeah, we get father when he says, if you don't go, you will not eat. You see, you see, even, even Jesus says that, with which one of you? The child asks for bread, you give him stone. He says, even you, even being evil, we ask for, you ask for fish, you give him scorpion, you give him serpent. He says, even you, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your own children. How much more your heavenly father? It was just a natural flowing relationship with Israel. These are my own people. He said, when I took you into the wilderness, did you not notice that I gave you food to eat? What seed did you sow that made me give you manna? Did I give you manna because you sowed any seed? Even as a matter of fact, I even said that you guys should not plant anything because once the cloud moves, you guys should move. Meaning that if you plant anything, wherever you are, it means that you will leave it behind. I took care of you by myself. I sponsored, I took, and showed the clothes you were wearing did not wear out. I took care of you by myself. Even the sandals you were wearing did not cut. I showed you by myself that I am naturally good. You didn't sow a seed. You didn't give me an offering. You didn't give me tithes. And I took care of you. How is it that God will do that to natural Israel and then the real Israel of God today have to use bribe, bribe God with offering and tithe to get the fundamental things of life? Let me tell you, it's not God that does not want to provide for you. It's your ignorance that is keeping you away from him. Look at this. 
And so naturally in the, the land of Israel, you see, beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments. Because all that God wants, the, 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 the preacher says the conclusion of the matter is this. The conclusion of the matter is, is obey the commandments. Live humbly before the Lord thy God. All that God is asking of you, Tayo, Okbe, Richard, is asking just that you obey his commandment. All the com- all the statutes of the commandment I give that you may live and multiply. You are his pride in the earth. You are his pride in the earth. You can, I see, you can dare God and say, God, you know, I love you. I know you are my father and you know you love me and I know you will take care of me. You know he cannot repent. He cannot be. Even if you be faithless, he will remain faithful. Let's run it. In not keeping his commandments and his judgment and his statutes, which I commanded this day. The difference between us and these guys, the Gentiles are the ones running after all these things. God is looking for, are you, are you for me? Are you for me? Keeping in my commandment. And look at this verse. verse. Well, lest when thou hast eaten, because there is a tendency in every one of us, after you have eaten and you are full and you have built goodly houses and dwelt therein, what? That when thy herds, thy flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold, there's money in your bank account. There is your, your, everything, your business is prospering and gold is multiplied and all that thou has, hast is multiplied that what then thy heart be what lifted up and thou what forget forget that forgetfulness no forget the lord thy god which brought thee out forth out of the land of egypt from the house of bondage verse 15 who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness wherein were fiery t- serpents and scorpions and, and drought where there was no water who brought thee forth who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint I mean things that were practically impossible God's faithfulness will always precede your own you cannot you, you cannot demonstrate your faithfulness so much to deserve whatever he will give you no no you can't buy his goodness did you hear me you can't buy his goodness it's the obligation of a good father to take care of his children and God is also in the business of spoiling you just in case you think that you are not you are not deserving of being spoiled God can spoil you I hope you know and it's okay to be postured in such a way that God should spoil you it's okay are you getting my point it's the same thing once someone get, you know some people think that the reason why there may be some money came for them last week maybe it's because of the money they gave upper week you must come to a point you see that's why offerings you don't give offerings out of necessity the, have you read that in your Bible? please help me with that scripture you, we don't give out of necessity is God such a beggar There is nothing about what you are giving that is the reason for him giving you. No, 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 no. No. Don't worry. Let's go on. Don't interrupt. Let's go on. Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna which thy fathers knew not? What offering did you give to get manna? Nothing. That he might humble thee and that he might prove thee to do thee good at the latter end now look at this and thou say in thy heart that what my power and the might of my hand had gotten me this world let me tell you something you must ever get to a place where the foundation upon which anything I have in my life is Jesus blood and his righteousness it is not by my righteousness. I didn't pray so much. I didn't give so much. 
so that you will not think that it's by your own hand, your power, or your might that had gotten you what? This world. Look at the platform God wants you to, ch- to, to stand on and, and, and rejoice. That is not by your power or by your might or by your strength or by your calculation or by your intelligence that gave, gave you what? This world. No. No. I can double dare you. Bring all the money in your account. It's not by your power, not by your might, not by your intelligence that gave you what? That if in your mind there is some withdrawal in your mind that is, you know some people want to say my job do you know your job is his provision (laughs) that job was provided that job is not your provision he is your provision he is your source the job is not your source Look at this. And so you see, get this, get this. You see, we said prosperity must begin in your soul. We have to start tearing down those foundations that make you think that I am wealthy because of my connections. I am wealthy because of who I know. I am wealthy because of what I do. I am wealthy because of my job. I'm wealthy because I have a master's degree. I'm wealthy because I'm doing a PhD. I'm wealthy because I, I, I went to school. Even to school, I'm telling you, you are not wealthy. Oh, people like, really? I'll tell you. If if God's faithfulness is qualified by what you have, if God's faithfulness is qualified by what you have, if God, the condition precedent before God can take care of you is based on what you have, think about it again. You mean for me to be a child of God, I have to have a degree. Before God can provide for me. Even in church we think. I See, listen, listen. I have taught also. And so you do not think that I, I am mixing things up. Am I saying that having a master's degree is bad? No. But it's not by my master's degree. It can be an added qualification. Listen, even God can tell you to do a master's. And as beautiful as that is. He's still the source. But it's not by master's degree that we eat on the table. When it is time for dinner, every one of us can come to the table and eat. So you will not think that the reason why they they served this one roasted corn, roast corn, why they give that one chicken? Because this one is, this one is a better child. This one is not. This one is a rebellious child. This one is a good child. No, every one of us come to the table, and it is the obligation of a good father to feed all of us. Are you listening to this? Separate the faithfulness and the goodness of God away from what you have done or what you can do. Now look at this. But thou shall remember what. What you will remember. Since it's not the power of your might, but look at what you remember is what? That what? The Lord, remember the Lord thy God, for it is He that what? Giveth thee what? Power to what? Giveth thee power to what? Giveth thee power to what? So when your herd and your flock was multiplying, it was His power that was at work. We are coming into a day and age where a man will prosper only by the power of God. If you think it has not happened, it happened. When Jacob was working with Laban, to tell you that there is such a thing that a man can be working with another man and then he did a test. He said, let's just separate the speckled ones. And then it multiplied more for him. There is such a power to get wealth. You see the same power in the life of Abraham, right? You see the same power in the life of Abraham. You see the same power in the life of Jacob. You see the same power in the life of Isaac. 
There is such. So, so he want Israel from the beginning. Understand the foundation is this. That it is not by your power nor by your might. But what? That it is the Lord thy God. It is he thy God. Give her the power to what? Get well. That he may what? Establish. Now. So just take this. As we end. We're going to. <clears throat> we're going to have. We're going to have. Um, we're going to have a series. Um, a seminar basically. Because I, I know we'll, we'll complete this with a seminar. Or possibly this Wednesday we'll, we'll, we'll continue. Look at this. That it is he that giveth the power to what? Get wealth. That he may what? Establish his covenant. Which is where unto thy fathers as it is this day. Prosperity in the hand of a believer is for only one reason. To establish the covenant. I'll say it again. Prosperity in the hand of a believer is to one end to establish the covenant to establish the covenant to establish what oh come on say it to establish what if you see God prosper you the reason he prospered you is for one reason to establish the covenant to establish the covenant. Luke chapter 12 as we close. Luke chapter 12 and verse 13. Okay, let's go to verse 15. When the guy said <clears throat> and he says and he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life what consisted not what and the abundance of the things what which he what possesses. Look at verse 16. Follow this parable. This is where we'll end. And he spake what? A parable unto them, saying, look at this. Look at this. The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room. I have no room to what? Where to bestow my what? <clears throat> and he said, This will I do. I will pull down my bands. And what will I do? I will build greater. And there will I what bestow all my fruits and my goods. <clears throat> Is this bad? Is there anything bad with that? Nothing. And I will what now? What's in bad way? And thou not forget. <laughs> you have started forgetting. And I will say to my soul. So, what what did he say? So, did you see so there? So, 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 so. See, that's where the prosperity. And I will say to my soul, soul. He didn't even mention his name. He said, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease. <laughs> Eat drink and be what and be merry what did they call that in uh, Yoruba is it bad no it's no, no you want to try in this time Faji thank you Faji Faji Express it's time for Faji do you know that for many of us you know we, we talked about it last season some people in this camp when we talked about this camp that have so much in foreign countries, you know, if you check the hidden agenda in most people, is to have enough so that they can be able to say, take thy ease. Thou hast enough goods for many years. Trust me, you have a wife, and all of a sudden today, this 5,000 is in your current first bank account. 
I don't know who that person is the first bank account at five thousand. But however, in your first bank account, maybe I don't like just first bank. Maybe do something. In that your first bank account with your five thousand, and today, 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 you just got an alert of five hundred million naira. I mean, I don't know. Oh, you see, you see some, some people's salvation is already shaking. <laughs> Only with just that, the sound of the alert, it's not even the alert. 500 million right now in your account. And you know that money is actually, do you know, no, let's leave it at Naira now. Habba, Habba. Covetousness. Do you know that that money is still small to some people? I said to some people, to many people. The 500 million is actually small to many people. Maybe if you say 5 billion, okay. Okay. And then it's still small to some people too. But 500 million. And you guys are sitting right now in church. Do you know you just flash husband, wife? Husband just bring out the phone. You know that actually, that kind of alert. You remove your glasses. You 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 widen the alert. You zoom in. You zoom in very well. And you, then what do you do? You start counting. <laughs> oh God! You count it. You count the zeros. The zeros is a problem. And I'm sure you count it more than once. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, that is eight. That's eight, right? Five hundred million. Ah, you just carry that alert and you flash your wife. Just give. I'm sure we'll have a disruption in this service. Like, first of all, we will not even understand Jesus Christ. So, in fact, she may... Who knows, maybe she will fall under the power. I mean, the, the usher will not first thing. Uh, what, what, what happened? What happened? She said, nothing, nothing, nothing. It's the power of uh, the most high. He has overshadowed me. <laughs> so, so... And then, and then she's holding them like, my God, my God. They'll be quick... They'll be, she'll, be, she'll be shaking, fever, there'll be sweat. There's, this is on the sweat. There's like, you'll be cleaning it. But you know, the next thing she said, What are we going to do? If you know women very well, what, what, what are we going to do? And then the next thing they will begin to think about is, Ah, we have to quickly keep it somewhere. Remove it from your account, transfer it to somewhere, and then possibly they'll start thinking maybe EFCC will trace you. Um, they'll so, so quickly remove it from wire the account, put it somewhere. But you know what? The idea is to put it somewhere where she can look at it's there. Uh, <laughs> God, <laughs> what have they done? <laughs> she, yeah. then, then the smile will be different on their faces from that day. But the idea is this men are looking for something that will take away in quotes that that poverty that hustle that we have enough money that we can eventually largest and faji and then we know that every other person they are running the rat race we we are exempted we already have enough to take care of us for many years so that one now said soul take thy ease eat, drink and be merry. Why? Look at this. But you know what? So when he did that, I'm like, oh God. God, God just came around. I saw the alert too. <laughs> <laughs> and he came around and said, guy, how far? I said, God said unto him, thou what? Fool. Thou fool. Doubtful. You entered the realm of foolishness the day you said, Soul, take thy ease, eat, drink, and be merry. You know what you wanted to you know what you wanted to do? You wanted to get yourself into a zone where you will not need God to provide again. That you're alright. Some of us, you see, we are all looking holy and nice and, and the perfume and all that, you know. 
I have said it, some people's salvation will crumble the day some allowed come in. Because there is something inside of you that will not need God anymore after you start seeing certain amounts of money. To an average Israelite, God wanted them to be used to plenty. But that that plenty will not take them away. That plenty is not supposed to affect your mindset. Let me tell you, the amount of money you right now have, if it is already affecting your mindset towards God, are you seeing the reason why you can't have beyond that? Oh God. Because there are many foolish people in church looking for more money. So he says, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be what? Required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? Guys, every one of us have that repenting to do. There's plenty of misbehavior that will come out of our bodies. He's, already, he's inside the right now before the alert comes. But he's asking, will you be foolish to say... You see, the question is, what amount of which alert will reduce you to foolishness? Do you know your threshold? Well, maybe your own is 500 million. Well, 500 million maybe for some. Maybe your own is 5 billion. Then foolishness will come in. And he's saying, guy, understand something. I gave birth to you into plenty. It is natural from where I come. But I still need you to be ever dependent on me. That is how I made you for me. We will look into this in greater details. But then he says, who shall those things be which thou hast provided? Now look at verse 21. So is he, and there is no exemption in, even in our generation, is he, is he that what? Layed up what? Treasure for himself. And is not rich toward God. Is not rich toward God. So is he. We'll expound on this a little bit more next time. So is he. Now question, are you one of are you are you are you this? The money that you have in your account, is it treasure you are laying up for yourself? We are hustling so that we will have enough money so that we will lay it up for ourselves. That moment where you will want to say, take thy ease. I think there's one thing. So when we say it, God actually is preventing you from getting to that place. So sometimes you ask, do you, do you know that you may misbehave after some time? But God is the one preventing you from misbehaving. Technically speaking, I'm just saying technically well. I, I, it's not really that God is the one. Your foolishness is actually preventing you. Do you know what God wants to do with you and money? Let's just pray. Let's just pray.